Hello everyone, welcome to TAC Raven Academy where we provide educational content to help you improve your knowledge in various areas. In this video, we will be exploring one of the most pressing issues facing our digital world today, cyber attacks. Cyber attacks can take many forms, from data breaches to ransomware attacks, and can have devastating consequences for individuals, businesses, and even entire nations. The rise of cyber attacks in recent years has highlighted the need for increased awareness and investment in cybersecurity measures. In this video, we will dive into the world of cyber attacks and explore the top 10 different cyber attacks, the motives behind them, and the strategies that the hackers used to infiltrate systems. Whether you are a cybersecurity professional or simply interested in learning more about the world of cyber attacks, this video is for you. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into the fascinating and ever-changing world of cyber attacks with TAC Raven Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. Many computer systems around the world are running again after they were frozen in a massive cyber extortion attack. Tens of thousands of computers in about 100 countries were affected. Experts say the so-called ransomware is no longer spreading. Jonathan Vigliotti has the latest from London. The massive hack crippled computer systems around the world, from Taiwan to Turkey. Spain's telephone system was among the first targeted. Russia's largest mobile phone company was hit. American-based FedEx announced they were also infected. In the UK, the virtual attack sent the National Health Service into emergency mode. Ambulances and patients were turned away from hospitals across the country. They said, I'm really sorry, but the computer system is down. Um, you're going to have to go away. We can't have any appointments. It would be dangerous to do so because you can't access any of the files. Hackers encrypted those files, rendering them unreadable. To decode them, they demanded $300 in ransom. The amount would double after three days. If ignored, they warned the data would be destroyed. The hack appeared to exploit a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows, first identified by the U.S. National Security Agency and later leaked in a series of stolen documents. British politicians immediately fired back, including Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn. What we've now got is a bunch of 21st century highway robbers that have got hacked into our NHS and basically offering protection money to get the information back in order to treat cancer patients or anybody else. It's unbelievably disgusting. Hackers tricked victims into opening corrupt links in emails disguised as invoices and security warnings. It's a primitive technique that cyber experts say can be guarded against by regularly backing up data and updating software. Here in the UK, government officials say computer systems are almost fully back up and running. It's still unclear who's behind the attack, but Rena, analysts say the hack appears to be the work of cyber criminals and not state sponsored. Thank you. The WannaCry ransom attack was a global cyber attack that occurred in May 2017, which infected more than 200,000 computers across 150 countries. It is considered one of the most significant cyber attacks in history. The malware used in the attack was a type of ransomware that encrypted files on infected computers and demanded payment in the cryptocurrency of Bitcoin for the files to be decrypted. The attack targeted computers running the Microsoft Windows operating system that had not been updated with the latest security patches. The malware exploited a vulnerability in the Windows Server Message Block (SMB) protocol, which allowed it to spread rapidly across networks. The attackers used a hacking tool called Eternal Blue, which was developed by the United States National Security Agency, also known as the NSA, and leaked by a hacker group called shadow brokers. The WannaCry attack affected many high-profile organizations, including the United Kingdom's National Health Services, which was forced to cancel thousands of appointments and shut down many of its services temporarily. Other victims included major companies such as FedEx, Renault, and Telefonica. The attack caused significant economic damage, with estimates of losses ranging from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. 
The attackers demanded a ransom of $300 in Bitcoin per infected computer to restore access to the encrypted files. Despite this, many victims did not pay the ransom, and the hackers reportedly made only around $140,000 in Bitcoin. A quote-unquote kill switch was eventually discovered, which prevented further spread of the malware. The WannaCry attack highlighted the importance of regularly updating software and implementing robust cybersecurity measures to protect against cyber attacks. It also demonstrated the potential for significant disruption and damage that could be caused by cyber attacks and the importance of international cooperation in responding to them. Financial and cyber experts warn the Equifax hack has the potential to haunt Americans for decades, and every adult should assume their information was stolen. Names, social security numbers, DOBs, addresses, driver's license numbers, and 200,000 credit cards. It's really disconcerting just because Equifax is trusted. Across the country today, frustration and anger at Equifax's security lapse. I, I don't think there's any good excuse, and I think their response is poor. You don't know who you can trust, where you can use your information, your credit cards. Amid a public backlash, Equifax today said customers who sign up for one year of free credit monitoring and theft protection will not surrender their rights to sue. But the hack means we could all be at risk our whole lives. Your name, address, social date of birth, that information is not going to change, and so it has perpetual value to a fraudster. So in five years, the threat is not gone. In 10 years and 20 years, the threat is not gone. Tonight, credit experts say every American should take immediate steps to safeguard their credit. Sign up for fraud alerts from Equifax and the other two credit agencies, Experian and TransUnion. Consider paying for an identity theft monitoring service. Also set up fraud alerts on your bank and credit cards. Consider freezing your credit report so only companies you already do business with will have access. Criminals will be locked out, but you'll need to unfreeze it when you need a legitimate credit check. And check your credit reports for suspicious activity. We're all entitled to one free credit report every year from each of the three agencies. More on freezing your credit on our nightly news Facebook page. The Equifax data breach occurred in 2017 is considered one of the largest data breaches in history. It affected 143 million customers' personal information, including social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, and in some cases, driver's license numbers and credit card numbers. The breach occurred due to a vulnerability in the company's website application software, which hackers were able to exploit to gain access to sensitive data. The breach was discovered by Equifax on July 29, 2017, but the company did not disclose it publicly until September 7, 2017. This delay in disclosure was criticized by many, as it meant that affected customers were left unaware of the breach for several weeks, during which time their personal information could have been used by criminals. The Equifax data breach resulted in a loss of trust among the customers of the company, and many criticized the company for its handling of the situation. Equifax offered free credit monitoring to affected customers, but this was criticized for being inadequate and for requiring customers to waive their rights to sue the customer in order to participate. The breach also led to calls for greater regulation of credit reporting agencies as they are entrusted with sensitive personal information and are seen as having significant power over individuals' financial lives. In response, the United States Congress passed the Economic Growth Regulatory Relief and Consumer Protection Act in 2018 which included provisions aimed at improving cybersecurity at credit reporting agencies and providing greater protections for their customers. The Equifax data breach serves as a reminder of the importance of robust cybersecurity measures and the potential damage that can be caused by cyber attacks. It also highlights the need for companies to be transparent in their handling of data breaches and to take the responsibility for protecting their customers' personal information. <laughs> that same screen name or username or login, they use that for multiple sites. And of course, if they're using the same password, if that's released, they can get into multiple accounts from the same hack. Anyone who's involved in that could take part of the user account, find those same user accounts on different social media sites or even an Amazon account, and then recover the passwords with that same user account to the Yahoo account. 
You should have different passwords for every account that you have. There should be no throwaway password you use as routine for every account, and a lot of people do, unfortunately. I think that this is the tip of the spear of what we're gonna see, and in 2017, as more cloud data is aggregated, there'll be just as many, maybe not user accounts, but just as large in percentage of their business of these cloud providers getting hit. Yahoo experienced two massive data breaches in 2013 and 2014, which affected all three billion of its user accounts. The breaches included the theft of usernames, email addresses, telephone numbers, dates of birth, and in some cases, security questions and answers that could be used to reset passwords. The stolen data was sold on the dark web, and the breaches became known as some of the largest in history. In September 2016, Yahoo publicly disclosed the 2014 data breach, which it claimed had affected 500 million user accounts. However, it was later revealed that the company had also experienced a separate earlier data breach in 2013, which had impacted all of its 3 billion user accounts. Yahoo's failure to disclose this second breach at the time was heavily criticized by customers, regulators, and the media. The breaches were attributed to a state-sponsored hacker group, and it was alleged that the stolen data was used for targeted attacks on individuals, including journalists and government officials. The breaches resulted in significant damage to Yahoo's reputation and finances and led to the resignation of its CEO, Marissa Mayer. Following the breaches, Yahoo was acquired by Verizon, which lowered the value of the deal by $350 million as a result of the breaches. Yahoo also faced multiple lawsuits from customers, regulators, and investors, which it settled for hundreds of millions of dollars. The Yahoo data breaches serve as a stark reminder of the importance of cybersecurity measures and the potential consequences of failing to protect user data. The breaches also highlight the need for transparency and swift action in response to data breaches, as well as the importance of companies being accountable for the security of their customers' data. It's kind of like playing that old game, Whack-A-Mole. First, it was Target, the security breach that compromised the confidential information of millions of Americans. Then we learned about Neiman Marcus. The high-end retailer disclosed it too had been hacked. We're still waiting for word on how many people are affected. And now a report from the Cyberwatch Group Intel Crawler suggests at least six more retailers have yet to tell customers they've been breached as well with the same malware attacking their online credit card processing. So the question now, where should we look next? Once it's identified, then the security community can rally around it and start to put controls in place. But the problem is the hackers know that, so they manipulate or mutate this malware and then reuse it. According to Intel Crawler, the source of the malicious software can all be traced back to one place, a hacker close to 17 years old in Russia. The report claims the very first sample of the malware was created in March of 2013, hitting stores in Australia, Canada, and the United States. Let's say hypothetically, a retailer has 40 million transactions by 40 million different customers. All 40 million may have been damaged in some way, and under law, they can be joined together in a class action lawsuit. Legally, the burden is on retailers to protect customer information. But from what we know now, this could be the tip of the iceberg. Experts say the team who made the malware that started this whole mess shared it with other hackers. And was able to put that up on the internet uh, for download for other hackers to then take uh, and potentially use it for malicious harm. And that's what we believe happened to Target as well as Neiman Marcus. In late 2013, Target experienced a major data breach that affected millions of customers' credit and debit card information, as well as personal information, such as names, addresses, and phone numbers. The breach occurred during the busy holiday shopping season and was the result of a sophisticated attack on Target's point-of-sale systems. The hackers gained access to Target's systems by stealing credentials from third-party vendors, which had access to Target's network. 
The attackers were then able to install malware on the target's point of sale systems, which allowed them to collect payment card information from customers who made purchases during the breach period. The breach affected up to 40 million customers and cost targets hundreds of millions of dollars in legal settlements and damage to its reputation. Target's handling of the breach was also criticized as it took several days for the company to acknowledge the breach publicly and then to notify its affected customers. The Target breach led to an increased public awareness of the importance of data security and it highlighted the vulnerability of large retailers to cyber attacks. It also resulted in changes to credit card security standards including the widespread adoption of EMV chip cards which are more secure than traditional magnetic stripe cards. The Target data breach serves as a reminder of the importance of strong cybersecurity measures including the need to carefully manage third-party vendors and to quickly detect and respond to cyber attacks. It also highlights the need for companies to be transparent and responsive in their handling of data breaches in order to maintain customer trust and minimize the impact of such incidents. What an amazing 24 hours between the thaw and the icy Cuba-US relations to the incredible move by Sony to back down to hackers and remove the movie The Interview from release. It is that story where we begin. Here are the latest headlines. U.S. officials conclude that North Korea is behind the devastating cyber attack against Sony and the scope of that attack forced Sony to cancel the planned December 25th release of the movie The Interview, which depicts reporters assigned to kill North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Meanwhile, it may be hard for anyone to eventually see the movie. Comcast announced it will not offer the movie on demand. Joining us first is Bruce Schneier, an internationally renowned security technologist who has penned a fascinating edit essay in the Wall Street Journal. Thank you so much for joining us, Bruce. Thank you. So I'm going to first read from the, uh, from the quote in the essay, which, which really hit home for me. Here it is. We're much better at relative security than we are at absolute security. That is why security experts aren't surprised by the Sony story. We know people who do penetration testing for a living. Real no holds barred attack that mimic a full-on assault by a dog expert attacker, and we know they always get in. It's pretty dire stuff. Should I be de de as depressed as I think I am reading this? You know, of course not. And this has been true for years, it's been true for decades, and we're all doing just fine. So while it's true in cyberspace, the attacker could always get in, it's true in the real world. If someone wanted to shoot you, they'd shoot you. But it doesn't happen very often, and we do just fine. This is an extreme scenario. It happens very, very rarely, and we have to accept that it does happen. And in late 2014, Sony Pictures suffered a major cyber attack that resulted in the theft of sensitive data, including employee data, intellectual property, and confidential emails. The attack was attributed to a group of hackers calling themselves the quote-unquote Guardians of Peace, who claimed to be motivated by anger over the planned release of the movie, quote-unquote The Interview, which depicted the assassination of North Korea leader Kim Jong-un. The attackers gained access to Sony's systems through a spear phishing attack, which involved sending convincing-looking emails to Sony employees in order to trick them into revealing their origin credentials. Once inside the network, the attackers were able to move laterally and steal large amounts of data. The attack resulted in significant damage to Sony's reputation and finances, as well as legal and regulatory fallout. The company was criticized for its handling of the breach, including its slow response and lack of transparency, which affected employees. The Sony Pictures hack highlighted the increased sophistication and frequency of cyber attacks and the need for companies to take cybersecurity seriously. It also demonstrated the potential impact of cyber attacks on businesses, including financial losses, damaged reputation, and legal and regulatory consequences. In response to the attack, the United States government attributed the attack to North Korea and imposed sanctions on the country. The attack also led to increased focus on the need for international cooperation in addressing cyber threats and the importance of private-public partnerships in protecting against cyber attacks. Earlier this week, we first learned that J.P. Morgan Chase, America's largest bank, may have been the victim of a cyber attack. The latest reports indicate the bank is still investigating whether its computer systems were hacked while its depositors are left to worry. 
Michael Regan, editor at large at Bloomberg News, joins us with more. Good morning, Michael. Bloomberg broke, broke this story to start with. It, it looks like this actually began way back in June. That's what it looks like, right? So, you know, basically what happened is they went right through one of their normal consumer facing websites. Uh, we're not sure exactly which one yet. And once in, you know, basically picking the lock of the front door of the yeah. bank in cyberspace. And once inside, they unleashed what looks like appears to be custom made software, malicious software. This is an extremely advanced attack is what you're saying. Right, right. I compare it, it's sort of the Ocean's Eleven of, of uh, cyber attacks. It's not a smash and grab. This is a very highly sophisticated, you know, people that knew what the inside of the bank's uh, technology infrastructure looked like, knew where to go, and they basically tunneled into, uh, you know, various data uh, sources and began slowly siphoning out data over a period of about two months. JP Morgan discovered it in uh, earlier this month. So what about JP Morgan though? Because we had just heard they spent a quarter of a billion saying we're going to protect our customers. We're not going to let what happened to Target and even Marcus happen to our customers. What could they have done if they've already spent all that money? Well, you know, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, has, has talked about this a lot. He's it's been a big concern of his, a big worry of his. Uh, they beefed up, as you said, their uh, security. They have about a thousand people working on it. Um, and he said, he said, look, this is an this is an issue they deal with just about every day. Someone trying, I mean, obviously, someone's always trying to steal someone's identity and larger, more organized attacks like this. And he said, look, sometimes the bad guys are going to win uh, in these cases. And you know, luckily in this one, it doesn't appear like any money was taken, but there definitely was a lot of data taken out of the bank. And it's the, the size and scope of it is still, uh, you know. Unfolding, it's not clear exactly how much and who's you know. When you think of J.P. Morgan's customers, it's not just right. grandmom's bank account. It's you know mutual funds, hedge funds, pensions, right. uh, and, everything. And there may be as many as four. In 2014, J.P. Morgan Chase, one of the largest banks in the United States, suffered a massive data breach that affected millions of its customers. The breach was discovered in July 2014 and was later attributed to a group of hackers with ties to Russia. The attackers gained access to J.P. Morgan systems through a spear phishing attack on an employee, which allowed them to bypass the bank's security measures and access sensitive information on customer data, including names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses. The hackers also stole account information, including internal, internal user credentials, which could potentially use to gain access to other systems. The J.P. Morgan Chase data breach was one of the largest in history with up to 76 million households and 7 million small businesses affected. The breach highlighted the vulnerability of financial institutions to cyber attacks and the potential consequences of such attacks for customers and the broader economy. JP Morgan Chase responded to the breach by implementing new security measures and investing in cybersecurity, including hiring additional staff and increasing its cybersecurity budget. The bank also offered identity theft protection and credit monitoring services to affected customers. The J.P. Morgan Chase data breach served as a wake-up call for the financial industry and highlighted the need for increased investment in cybersecurity measures. The breach also underscored the importance of employee education and training in preventing cyber attacks, as well as the need for rapid detection and response to such incidents in order to minimize their impact. The NotPetya ransomware attack, which occurred in June 2017 was one of the most destructive cyber attacks in history, causing widespread disruption and financial losses for businesses around the world. The attack targeted Ukrainian financial energy and government organizations, but quickly spread to other countries and organizations through the software update from a Ukrainian accounting software company. The NotPetya malware was designed to look like ransomware, but its true purpose was to cause damage and destruction. The malware was able to spread rapidly across networks and encrypt entire hard drives, making it difficult, if not impossible, to recover affected systems. In addition to encrypting data, the malware also modified the master boot record of infected computers, rendering them unable to boot up properly. The attack affected a wide range of organizations, including shipping giant Maersk, which reportedly lost up to $300 million, and pharmaceutical company Merck, which reportedly lost up to 870 million. The attack also caused significant disruptions to global shipping and logistics networks. The NotPetya attack was attributed to Russian state-sponsored hackers, and it highlighted the growing threat of non-state cyber attacks. The attack also underscored the need for organizations to prioritize cybersecurity and to have robust backup and disaster recovery plans in place in order to minimize the impact of such incidents. 
The NotPetya attack served as a warning to organizations around the world that the threat of cyber attacks is very real and that the consequences of such attacks can be severe. It also highlighted the need for increased international cooperation in addressing the growing threat of cyber warfare and nation-state cyber attacks. Terry, intelligence, and law enforcement officials have been warning Congress and the country about a coming cyber attack against critical infrastructure in the United States that could affect everything from the heat in your home to the money in your bank account. The warnings have been raised before, but never with such urgency, because this new era of warfare has already begun. The first attack, using a computer virus called Stuxnet, was launched several years ago against an Iranian nuclear facility, almost certainly with some U.S. involvement. But as we first reported in March, the implications and the possible consequences are only now coming to light. The Stuxnet attack, which occurred in 2010, was a highly sophisticated cyber attack that targeted Iran's nuclear program. The attack was designed to disrupt Iran's uranium enrichment process by targeting its industrial control systems. Stuxnet was a computer worm that was able to spread rapidly across networks and infect a wide range of systems. The malware was designed specifically to target Simon's industrial control systems used in the Iran's nuclear program, and it was able to modify the code on these systems in order to cause physical damage to the centrifuges used to enrich the uranium. The Stuxnet attack was a major breakthrough in the use of cyber attacks as a weapon of warfare, and it highlighted the growing threat of cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. The attack also demonstrated the potential for cyber attacks to cause physical damage and destruction, not just steal data or disrupt networks. The Stuxnet attack was believed to have been developed by the United States and Israel, and it was part of a broader effort to disrupt Iran's nuclear program. The attack was highly classified and was not publicly acknowledged by the United States or Israel until years later. The Stuxnet attack had a significant geopolitical implication, and it raised the question about the use of cyber attacks as a tool of statecraft. The attack also highlighted the need for increased investment in cybersecurity and for better international cooperation in addressing the growing threat of cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. Overall, the Stuxnet attack represented a major milestone in the evolution of cyber warfare and demonstrated the potential for cyber attacks to cause physical damage and disruption on a global scale. Eighty million customers of Anthem, the nation's second largest health insurance company, are the latest victims of a massive security breach. Hackers got information like names, birthdays, and social security numbers in what Anthem CEO Joseph Swedish called a very sophisticated external cyber attack. In a statement, Swedish says he himself was a victim. He added they don't believe medical information or credit card numbers were compromised. Anthem has established a website, anthemfacts.com, for its current and former customers who may be affected. The company says customers who suspect any cases of identity theft should immediately report it to the FBI. In 2015, Anthem, one of the largest health insurance companies in the United States, suffered a massive data breach that affected up to 80 million of its customers. The breach was discovered in January 2015 and was later attributed to a group of hackers with ties to China. The attackers gained access to Anthem's systems through a spear phishing attack on an employee, which allowed them to bypass the company's security measures and access sensitive customer data, including names, birth dates, social security numbers, and other personal information. The hackers also stole employees' credentials, which they used to gain access to other systems within the company. The Anthem data breach was one of the largest in history and highlighted the vulnerability of the healthcare organizations to cyber attacks. The breach exposed sensitive personal information of millions of customers, putting them at risk of identity theft and other types of fraud. Anthem responded to the breach by implementing new security measures and investing in cybersecurity, including hiring additional staff and increasing its cybersecurity budget. The company also offered identity theft protection and credit monitoring services to affected customers. The Anthem data breach highlighted the need for increased investment in cybersecurity measures by healthcare organizations and underscored the importance of employee education and training in preventing cyber attacks. 
It also serves as a reminder of the potential consequences of cyber attacks on individuals and the broader economy and highlighted the need for better international cooperations in addressing the growth of cyber attacks. More than 21 million Americans had personal information stolen from government files in a data breach that was six times as large as originally disclosed. The information was hacked from the Office of Personnel Management, or OPM, which said today it is highly likely that anyone who went through background checks to apply for a government position since 2000 was affected. Joining us to fill in the blanks is Josh Lederman of the Associated Press, who's been covering the story. Uh, in terms of scope, we know this is huge, but how is it different from the earlier hacks we've heard about, Josh? Well, what we're finding out now, Gwen, is not only were many more Americans affected than we previously knew, but just what kinds of data. We're talking about very personal data that most people will be very uncomfortable knowing is out there. We're talking about people's health histories, their criminal histories, their educational and residency backgrounds, uh, as well as interviews that they conducted with members of uh, OPM, the Office of Personnel Management, or other people conducting background checks in the process of applications to get a security clearance. In fact, all the kinds of information that we're warned to protect with our lives, social security numbers, biometric fingerprints. That's right, as well as usernames and passwords that a lot of these applicants used as they were trying to get their applications. How was this discovered? Well, it was discovered by a system that the government had put in place uh, to try and detect in, uh, breaches just like this one. Unfortunately, that system was not the most modern system, and it did not detect it until it was quite a bit too late. Uh, as the government started looking into it, they realized that the initial breach that they detected was actually much broader and affected many more people than they initially thought. At the time, I remember there being speculation about who was behind the breach, who actually was, who the hackers were. Do we have any more indication of who that might have been? No new indication from the government. Now, many members of Congress, including Senate Democratic Leader Harry Reid and others, have said this was China. There have even been federal agencies that have said, uh, without putting their own names on it, you know, we're pretty sure this is China. However, the White House, the Office of Personnel Management today, uh, declining to name who was responsible for this, uh, only to say that they believe that these two breaches that we know about work by the same person and that they're working behind the scenes to do what needs to be done uh, in response to those breaches. Now, as you said, the government had put in place a system to try to detect these breaches. How, um, how do they, has it, does this system help them figure out a way to prevent them from happening again? The Office of Personal Management, also known as OPM, had a data breach which was one of the largest cyber attacks in history on a U.S. government agency. Occurring in 2015, the breach affected over 21 million current and former federal employees as well as their families and associates. The attackers believed to be Chinese state-sponsored hackers gained access to OPM systems through a spear phishing attack on an employee. The attackers were then able to steal sensitive personal information including social security numbers, addresses, employment, history, and security clearance information. The OPM data breach was a significant breach of national security as it compromised the personal information of many individuals who held security clearances and had access to classified information. The breach also raised concerns about the government's ability to protect sensitive information and highlighted the need for improved cybersecurity measures across government agencies. Following the breach, the OPM implemented new security measures, including the use of multi-factor authentication and enhanced encryption. The agency also offered credit card monitoring and identity theft protection services to affected individuals. The OPM data breach served as a wake-up call for the United States government and underscored the need for increased investment in cybersecurity measures and the importance of employee education and training in preventing cyber attacks. It also highlighted the growing threat of nation-state cyber attacks and the need for international cooperation in addressing the threat. Overall, the OPM data breach was a significant cyber attack that had far-reaching consequences for national security and the individuals affected by the breach. It underscored the need for continued vigilance and investment in cybersecurity to protect sensitive information and national security. Thank you for watching everyone. This has been our Attack Raven Academy video on the top 10 cyber attacks. 
We hope you found it informative and useful in your journey to improve your skills and knowledge in various areas. Our goal at Tack Raven Academy is to provide high quality educational content that is accessible to everyone, whether you are a beginner or an experienced professional. We believe that learning should be engaging and fun, and we work hard to create engaging and interactive content that will help you reach your goals. We also strive to stay up to date with the latest trends and developments in various fields, ensuring that our content is always relevant and valuable. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and turning on the notification bell to be notified of our latest releases. We also encourage you to share our content with others who may find it useful. At Tack Raven Academy, we are committed to supporting you in your personal journey and your professional growth. We believe that education is a lifelong journey and we are honored to be a part of yours. Thank you again for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our future videos.